Good morning, sisters, and welcome back to our episode three, Thursdays, 10 at 10, for this society, 10 at 10. Um, I hope you're learning something. I hope these are helpful. Um, like I said, I'm not always sure what I have to offer that you couldn't just click and find better information, but I will just try to bring you some information and just that reminder to go there every week hopefully is enough. I'm going to rehash a couple of things from last um, time when we talked about um, replacing our food storage and rotation. And one of the things I had you do was write the date you purchased the item on there. So we're just going to write 12 or 20. But the other thing I had you do was write 6 slash 6 because you got 6 cans of whatever it was we talked about. My daughter pointed out and I went, oh, you know, I never thought of that. I It just never was a problem for me. I just remembered. So this is a problem. <laughs> Let's say you bought it 12 or 20 and you bought 20 cans. So if you put one of 20, or two of 20, or three of 20, how would you know which one's the can and which one's the date? <laughs> Good point, thank you, Jenna. So uh, instead of one of 20, we're gonna, or one slash 20, we're gonna go one of 20. So a little bit more writing, sorry, my writing's terrible on cans really hard to write and do this at the same time. So maybe stick that little of in there. That way you know how many cans you have and then you're not gonna confuse the cans with the date. Um, and you're gonna know exactly what you're talking about. So good point. Then the next thing was I had a couple of friends ask me, and I have more than a couple of friends. There's a couple that eat this way, they didn't ask about it. But then there was a couple that said, look, we just eat fresh food. We don't like the canned things or even the frozen things that much. We just go to the store and buy fresh green beans or fresh peas or, you know, whatever they can find with seasonal. And how would I know how much I have to store? Well, the best way, the best advice I can give you is to figure out how much of those you eat in a week, on a typical week. And if, if it's maybe go a little longer than that if you can and keep track of it. Just because, you know, every week is not typical. Some weeks are more typical and some are crazy. So maybe go over two, three weeks, a whole month if you can. And it kind of keeps track of how many times your family ate green beans and how many servings you had. Then you can go to the store, find those green beans. I don't know why it's always green beans. They're not even my favorite, but stuck in my head. And, you know, everything talks to you about how many servings there are. Well, this is like three and a half servings in a thing. So if you know that your family ate six servings of green beans pretty much a week, then you also know you need 24 servings for a whole month. So if each can is six servings, you're going to need four cans per month, so 48 cans for your whole year's supply. Now, like we talked about, if that's just going to sit on your shelf and you're not going to rotate it, my family doesn't eat strictly fresh foods just because we've had food storage our whole marriage and we rotate and um, it's just not financially good <laughs> hasn't been financially great for us to just let it sit there and then get rid of it and start over so we rotate and so we do eat what we store which is pretty much what you want to do but if you're not going to do it that way and this is just an emergency basis and you want to have your variety of the canned and the home canned and whatever. Now keep in mind the home canned is not going to store as long, but maybe you're feeling better about home canned because you can control what's in there. You know what you put in your own home cans so that it's safe. You did it. You grew it. That's great. That's, that's a pretty good, you know, fresh way to do fresh. But if you're still not going to do it that way, just have some on hand. All right. So to our topic today, and I wish I'd written it down. I don't know why I don't think of this until I'm on camera. Um, we, our word of the day last time was replaced. We have a new word of the day. It's called location. Just like real estate, location, location, location. It's all about location. So is your food storage. So there's five things that are really not great for your food storage. That's heat and cold, moisture, light, pests, and chemicals. So I do know of people who the only place they have to store a lot of their food storage is in the garage. That is not the best place. If you have any other place, if you can find a corner, if you can make lots of closets work, uh, I know people put food storage on their closet bottom. 
just put some wood on top and that's where your shoes go uh, under your bed <sighs> anything you can do that's inside because your temperature doesn't do this you know it pretty much stays the same a little bit of variance summer and winter but it usually stays the same so you want to keep that heat and cold like we talked about the first time between 45 to 75 max temperature and I would say 45 to 55 is the best um, find where you can store that a cool dark basement now light light is another thing we're going to talk about buckets one of these times all buckets are not created equal if you look at your buckets some of them are almost see-through some of them are translucent others are definitely solid colors you want that darker storage um, but light in your storage room is also important if you can darken the windows if you have windows if that's how you need to do it a dark closet is good because it's usually dark um, just try not to have light will will zap your food storage too so light heat um, moisture moisture is another one that will rust your cans um, it's just not great it will rust your rings on the top of your jars it's yeah if you can keep it dry do so another reason the outdoors or in your garage sometimes is not the best idea if you can help it and you know if you can't help it it's better to have something in the garage that will last half or less of the shelf life and still have it than it is to have nothing in my opinion so just consider that and then let's see chemicals if you're gonna have your stuff in the garage be super careful about where your chemicals are and where your food storage is I would if you could do anything do not have chemicals in the same room if you can split that up in the garage or get a cupboard that shuts tight that you can store your chemicals in so it doesn't leak into your food storage because it will it really will um, just don't have them in close proximity and uh, that goes for when you store your um, some of your personal care items and medicines and especially cleaning supplies you know that's something we don't often think to store but I maybe we do now after COVID and <laughs> you can't get them um, if you had at least the stuff to make your own supplies or you know an abundance of cleaning supplies on hand but don't store them in the same place as where you're going to have your food it's just not a good idea really one of the worst ideas one of the worst things I think out there because you know potentially contaminate your food and not just contaminate them but contaminate them with harmful chemicals to your family so you don't want to do that and the last one is pests now the last place we lived was surrounded by fields literally we lived on a corner that every corner was a field but where our house was um, which was really fun we had a wonderful great corn doll that lived in our tree in our backyard that we thought was really cool to watch every winter um, and coyotes I don't know lots and lots of wildlife but we also had lots and lots of rodents and other little bugs you know where there's wildlife there's smaller wildlife where there's smaller wildlife there's lots of weeds and bugs and yeah circle of life anyway um, we did at one point in my storage room have a huge disastrous infestation of mice and I'd always had mice it was just always going to be a thing from because of where we lived we put out traps we put out poison we did our best to contain them but this little little stinkers don't know how they got in there but they found a way and um, it's a pretty sealed off room anyway we had to throw a lot of stuff out and dig in there because boy were they in things so if it was in a can it could be cleaned off really good and, and sanitized it was probably okay but boxes other packaging so in my new home that I live now I package it up in tubs of plastic so not only is is it in there it's also double packaged just in case there was a little bit of evidence of rodents when we moved in and we have seen just a couple that we've caught but we're on top of that this time but just make sure you do your very best to keep them out of there and be careful also if you're going to put poison out for those little critters that you also are careful with where the poison is around your food. Um, you want to keep them out, but you also don't want to contaminate if we get. 
Anyway, we will be not doing this broadcast over the Christmas holidays. We'll start again the week of the 4th of January, so I believe that would make it the 5th and 7th. You guys have a wonderful, happy holidays. Thanks for listening. Hope you join us again in January. See you then. Take care. Bye. <laughs>